Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Einstein, if you're killing off anti-nutrients, guess what you're killing off as well simultaneously? Nutrients. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you wanted me to react to Abby Sharp with her video Joe Rogan Show Reveals Jordan Peterson's Shocking Carnivore Diet. Your girl has some big thoughts. Alright, I can't wait to hear those big thoughts. Let's have a look. That's a hard no for me, dog. Hey everyone, dog. I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. She's so fake, man. Oh, hide like music, cooking children, Abby. Okay, let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Seed, and we'll be taking a look. All right, I'm gonna skip right ahead. So Jordan Peterson is a Canadian psychologist who's really no stranger to ruffling a few feathers for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to even touch politics today because I have enough to talk about with I don't think you would have anything valuable to say about politics. His endorsement of the Thank you for not speaking about on it. the Joe Rogan show. <gasps> I that was so extremely misplaced. No, a lot of spice wow. in one sentence right there. No, but seriously, if you were something? wondering what the f you eat on a carnivore Why diet, are you swearing well, on? according to Jordan Peterson, I eat beef and salt and water. Buckle up, babies. Let's dive in and debunk some of the pro carnivore claims he makes on the show. Oh, she's so insufferable. I really don't understand how you can listen to her, man. Claim number one: I'm suffering here for you guys. Diet results in weight loss. Then I lost seven pounds the first month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. It's like I'd throw away all my clothes. And I lost all right, let me stop it right there. She said that his first claim is that the carnivore diet helps with weight loss. He didn't make that claim. He simply said that he lost weight. Just 50 pounds. I'm nowhere near as hungry as I used to be. My appetite's probably fallen by 70%. So this weight loss definitely does sound extreme, but not that surprising when you really think about it. So for one, this diet is just fat. Okay, so it's not surprising that he lost weight, but why do you frame it as if he was making a truth claim that you then had to debunk? What is this? And protein, which are two macronutrients that are very satiating because they delay yeah. stomach emptying and digest slower than, let's say, simple carbs. Also Moreover, you have specific amino acids within meat that our guts developed receptors for. Don't tell this the vegans, though. So a diet of literally mad. just one food or food group with no sauce or garnishes, side dishes, etc., is going to get so boring and monotonous that it's pretty hard to overeat. It is pretty monotonous. I would agree with her. A lot of folks would just end up eating the bare minimum to keep the hunger pains at bay because eating like a second porterhouse is probably going to seem like a huge chore when you've already had Not a really. T-bone for lunch. And while I would argue no. that all fad weight loss diets are unsustainable, the carnivore diet really takes the cake. For one, but again, why do you frame it as a fat weight loss diet? That is not the reason why Jordan Peterson or his daughter Michaela Peterson went carnivore to begin with. Jordan Peterson talked extensively about his depression, Michaela talked about her health issues, and the only diet that would resolve those issues was the carnivore diet. Nobody of the Petersons did it for weight loss, nor do they advertise this diet for weight loss. You're spreading misinformation for clear. And it's expensive on as you. to meet 2,000 Stop calories swearing, woman. steaks, you're looking at at least $25 or more per day. Second, that depends. If you're eating steaks, yes, that could be expensive, but you could simply eat minced meat. You have it's very, very little opportunity for any socializing around food. Unless you're dining in a steakhouse where they're cool with you swapping out your potato for a side of salt. That is not true either. Yes, it might be slightly more complicated, but why would we use restaurant as a measuring standard for a good diet? A bodybuilder, for example, during contest preparation who's eating only rice and chicken and is weighing every single gram of the chicken breast is obviously not the best customer that restaurants look for. Nevertheless, the diet works. It seems you're pretty much doomed to just dine alone at home 
for life. There's been yeah, there are no steak houses, you can't have scrambled eggs, you can't have burger patties. A mistake. No. You've accidentally given me the food that my food eats. And three, there are a whole host of not so sexy side effects that I'm gonna speak to in a moment. Not to mention, when you inevitably throw in the towel on this miserable exercise, you'd not only gain all the what? weight right back, but you'd also probably be faced with overwhelming digestive problems as your body is forced to really quickly upregulate all of the enzymes that were suppressed from your mono meal lifestyle. But have you ever tried it? And is Probably weight not. loss really so important? When On that note, I'm not making the claim that everybody has to eat the carnivore diet until the rest of their lives. However, coming from a vegan background, I was vegan for four years straight. The carnivore diet was the only diet that would heal me. My body was reacting viciously to all kinds of plant matter. For half a year, I had to eat only meat in order to heal my gut. Nowadays, I can eat a variety of foods again. The carnivore diet is the perfect healing diet and moreover, it will regulate your hunger. Once you give your body nutritionally dense animal foods, your body will react totally different to the food groups afterwards, which means you won't be munching on senseless carbohydrates. No, Abby, it's not healthy just because society does it. Health and Go figure. life is at stake? <laughs> No pun intended. We know that a what? diet that's very high in red meat is associated with increased risks of colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer. Yeah, and we for also sure. Know Look into those studies, you will see that they've never been done on carnivore diets. They've only been done on so-called omnivores, people that consume an 80% plant-based diet in most instances and then eat some processed meat. Yes, red meat is the enemy. That ultra-high protein wow. diets, especially those high in red meat, can strain our kidneys and increase calcium loss. And while sure. the evidence on the impact of saturated fats is controversial <laughs> and She's nice, reading this. As I discussed in my video right here, we do know that high intakes of saturated fat from red meat specifically does appear to increase the risk of heart disease by increasing trimethylamine and oxide. She's it also reading the whole thing. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Diet can only displace like really f important nutrients. Why do you have to swear all the time? It's so extremely unattractive. Like fiber, Not that she was attractive before C, then, but and other you get antioxidants that are largely found in plant-based foods. And we know that a diet completely just void of fiber can have negative implications for our microbiome. You don't believe anything you say. You can't even say it from the top of your head. You constantly have to read articles. You don't even understand those articles. Bio, wow. while low intakes of antioxidants like vitamin C carries increased risks to health. Have you actually ever looked into the research that vitamin C and glucose are competing? When you're eating a zero-carb diet, you need much less vitamin C. Jordan Peterson, the lack of vitamin C from the carnivore diet is a non-issue. Which brings me to claim number two, you don't need vitamin C. Hmm. I would assume that you need phytonutrients. I would assume you need vit vitamin. There is no such thing as a phytonutrient. Vitamin supplement. Just like vitamin C, for example. Yes. Turns out if you don't eat carbohydrates, you don't need vitamin C. Huh, who would have guessed that? How does that work? Vitamin C. It's not true that you don't need vitamin C, but you need much less. C is necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, not quite. Let's no. <laughs> minerals. Vitamin C serves more than just one function in the body. So for example, it's involved in collagen. Does anybody really think her format is entertaining? I'm wondering. And neurotransmitter production, immune function, well, I can't watch this. wound healing. How should anybody take you serious if 90% of your video is reading something off the screen? <laughs> and it's also wow. anti-inflammatory due to its antioxidant it properties. So yeah, inflammatory I definitely wouldn't knock the importance of vitamin C as strictly just a wow. metabolizer. Plus, okay. vitamin C is didn't listen actually at all. involved I can't. in protein metabolism by playing an important role in the synthesis of collagen, L-carnitine, catecholamines, and... But why would you need collagen synthesis if you are eating collagen? Other proteins. Can you explain this? is this? why vitamin C is essential no. for wound repair and healthy brain function, along with a shit ton of other things. She really thinks she's edgy when she swears. With that said, That's so what repulsive. happens Western women. when you're not wow. getting any vitamin C from the carnivore 
diet? Well, <laughs> of course, this would have immunological, cognitive, and dermatological consequences. Yeah, immunological, dermatological. How if actually all the immune diseases that Michaela Peterson had are resolved? And so in what are we talking cases, about? You could develop scurvy, which results in symptoms of fatigue. Okay, but he didn't develop scurvy after years. How do you explain that? Inflammation, depression. She's just a hysterical chick. Even death. Maybe it's even not death. Yeah, but he's still here. Unfortunately. But if you eat three pounds of steak every day, you're gonna die. However, proponents of Why? the carnivore diet argue that you can apparently obtain enough vitamin C from a meat-only diet to prevent scurvy. And while they're technically <sighs> not, wrong, especially if you would be eating raw meat. Wrong here. But since most carnivores on don't do Inuit it. communities suggest that one can obtain vitamin C from animal organs and raw meat. Yes. You would have to eat a lot of meat. If she swears one more time. I'm gonna cut off the video. So for I example, really mean this. you it's can annoying. eat 770 grams of raw beef liver to get a pathetic 10 milligrams of vitamin C. Or yes, but yet again, carbohydrates, glucose, and vitamin C are competing for the same pathway, and therefore you really need less vitamin C. It's true. Otherwise, Jordan Peterson would be dead already. Or you can take a single bite out of an orange. Your choice. So while carnivore diet- And by the way, as I said already, I'm not promoting the carnivore diet for every single human being out there. However, if you have autoimmune issues like the Petersons and the diet helps you, go right ahead. You have hacked their wow. way into preventing scurvy by eating more organ meats. It's very unlikely- She's so hateful. She isn't even happy that those people resolve their health issues. Hitting the 90 milligram no. daily- She's just gonna talk about the diet. Recommendation, and the claim get in like half a bell pepper without inadvertently throwing everything else out of whack. Yeah, but what if you can't eat the bell pepper? Lastly, what the then? The diet are quick to rag on vegetables for their anti-nutrient properties. Jordan yeah. Peterson never explicitly spoke about this on the podcast app. But, but I'm still going to blame him. But I do really want to quickly debunk this since Let's. we're all here and it does come up quite often. Now, it is it's true amazing. that some vegetables, legumes, and whole grains do contain anti-nutrients that reduce the absorption of some, some vitamins and minerals. But in general, anti-nutrients are not not a major threat to our health and the foods that contain them also contain beneficial nutrients like fiber, vitamins. Fiber is not a nutrient, Abby. Continue. And antioxidants. Wow. Plus a lot of the anti-nutrient content contains. Yeah, so you didn't list one nutrient there. You simply said that some of them have anti-nutrients, but they do have nutrients as well that I'm not going to list. Fantastic. In certain foods wow. is also greatly reduced just by cooking them. Ah, yes. Yes, exactly. Wow, debunked. Einstein, if you're killing off anti-nutrients, guess what you're killing off as well simultaneously? Nutrients. If you look into B vitamins or water-soluble vitamins to begin with, they're very, very heat sensitive. You're killing them off when you're cooking them. So moving on to claim number three, wow. carnivorism can cure anxiety and depression. Quit eating greens. And I thought, oh, really? Again, she says it's a claim as if it was a general claim. This is what the diet did for him. Just Michaela, That's all. Cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and chicken and beef. It's like, I have to cut out the goddamn greens? It's like, try it for a month. Okay, within a week, I was... 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%. And I've been better every single day. He's simply sharing his experience. I'm better That's now it. probably than I've ever been in my life. And I haven't been taking any presents for a whole year. Listen, Congrats. what works for one person's mental health is not going to work for another. Never, never, Abby. It only works for one person. Is that true? So that must mean if we look into conventional medicine and antidepressants, those antidepressants must work only for one person. Never belittle someone's yeah. lived experience. But Oh, but I'm going to do it anyways. What does the data say? <laughs> well, there was really only one retrospective study amazing. on the carnivore diet, which <laughs> used self-reported data, aka pretty much the biased bottom of the barrel when it comes to study design quality. Not going to belittle. But anyways, no. so any effect that the carnivore <laughs> diet may have on mood disorders like anxiety and depression wow, is largely anecdotal She's and so not fake. evidence -based. So disingenuous. However, we wow. do have some research on the effects of the keto diet for depression. Okay. And given that the carnivore diet is essentially like yeah. a higher protein version of the keto diet and mm -hmm. that it eliminates carbs and puts the body into yeah. a state of keto 
ketosis. It does give it us a to. better idea of what might be going on neurologically. So mm -hmm. research suggests that the keto diet may help to improve symptoms of anxiety and depression by increasing circulating levels of the neurotransmitter GABA. Blah, blah, blah. So the keto diet, because we have some vegetables within their diet, is more socially acceptable and therefore I'm going to appreciate those studies listed here and I'm going to confirm those studies as well with my own bias. GABA, Go which ahead. Which plays a key role in managing stress. Wow anxiety and mood however more yeah. research is needed to fully understand this mechanism yeah. before we can like recommend the keto diet just eat as everything a legitimate only then you're normal mood disorders and even if we did have more research to recommend this even as if. like a possible adjunct therapy <laughs> it would never be recommended that you only eat meat there's yeah. really nothing Why? Like all right so even if we would have more research let's say 100 proof that the carnivore diet regulates mood disorders even then you shouldn't eat just meat duh miraculous about a ribeye steak <laughs> that will cure your depression you would still be able to eat a variety of other keto friendly uh, foods. all right but if you're super sensitive to the anti-nutrients in plants phytates goitrogens gluten etc etc then yes a steak is quite miraculous because it comes with all the nutrition you need, zero fiber and zero anti-nutrients. You have to eat everything! You can eat like vegetables, nuts, seeds, fish, and dairy, and you'd probably be happier if you weren't constipated or losing your teeth due to scurvy or malnutrition. All right, did John Peterson lose his teeth? Okay. In fact, research suggests that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables is associated with a lower risk of depression. Yes. So, yeah, the logic here just doesn't check out. But back Yeah, the logic here just ugh. in for a hot moment because Aww. I do find that his testimony is very powerful. So, what could possibly <laughs> sure. explain his unique ability to get off his meds? Well, honestly, there's a lot to be unsure about in the world of mental health research, but one thing is pretty oh, clear man. that the placebo effect is real. We have lots of Yeah, must be the placebo effect. I must have lived through the placebo effect as well. When I was a vegan I was eating pretty much everything that you're recommending here. I was going to the toilet 16 times per day. When I started eating fish again, that reduced to three to four times per day. When I went carnivore, I just went to the toilet once per day. Placebo. The power of placebo for anxiety Powerful. and depression. Because Powerful. Because positive placebo, placebo experience can increase mood neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. And despite a lot of heated controversy <sighs> and debate, we even have have studies to suggest that studies. placebo medication may actually produce the same effect as actual antidepressant pharmaceuticals. Wow. Now, another potential explanation here is that Peterson's autoimmune disease made him uniquely and legitimately sensitive to a number of different foods, which he effectively removed due to the nature of his very restrictive diet. Carnivorism cures autoimmune diseases. And my psoriasis disappeared. I've had gum disease since I was 25. That's been uh, again, the guy isn't making any truth claims. He simply shares his experience. You're strawmanning him. It's enough to have. I've had to have minor surgical interventions, scraping woman. and that sort of thing to keep it at bay. It's gone. I checked with my dentist before this last tour. placebo. John. No inflammation. Placebo. So, as I discussed in my video on downshiftology, which you can watch right here, autoimmune diseases are complicated as. Okay, and this is it. All right, guys, as I said, if she swears one more time, I'm going to cut off the video. It's long enough as it is anyways. This must have been the most annoying YouTube video I have ever watched hands down. Anyways, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.